All right, well, as we get closer to the Orioles home opener, still celebrating opening day weekend for the 2022 season across Major League Baseball, and no better way to do that than looking back on some of the coolest opening days in history. We've got Michael Ortman here with us, who is the writer of opening day 50 for 50, and I have to say, I'm a little biased. This whole story for you started just south of Camden Yards at RFK down in D.C., but I mean, what has this all been like for you? Take us back to you being a kid and beginning this whole journey? I was uh, nine years old in 1970 when my dad pulled me out of school early one day uh, at lunchtime and said, let's go to opening day. And he was a big event kind of guy. He was more excited because the president was going to be there than, than he was a baseball fan. But he knew I was a baseball fan. And I loved the Washington Senators. But a couple of years later, the Senators left town and I had no home team. So dad said, let's go to Baltimore. Frankly, at the time, I didn't know where Baltimore was. It was way up north somewhere. But we went and at the Memorial Stadium in the 70s and off to college I went uh, for a four-year detour through Chicago, which was a lot of fun, back to Memorial Stadium, then Camden Yards, and then ultimately when baseball came back to Washington, as I know Baltimore football fans can appreciate when you lose a team and then you get one back, going back to Washington, back to RFK, and then Nationals Park has been the, the last 10 or 15 years or so. It's very exciting, a lot of fun. Now, I love that you have memories of both Memorial Stadium oh, yeah. and Camden Yards. What are, what are two memories from each of them that might be super contrasting that you particularly loved? I got to tell you, the, the, very, the opening day 1984 at Memorial Stadium was kind of a weird week for Baltimore because the Colts had left town five days earlier and they were they shared Memorial Stadium. So you, you're raising the 1983 World Championship banner the same weekend you're mourning the loss of your pro football team. And it was just very strange. And I had the privilege at the time working for a startup cable channel in the earliest days of cable TV called Home Team Sports. And we were going on the air that same week. The first time fans had seen home games on television. Then I was so used to it with Masson, of course. But back then, it was a whole new thing. That was one. I'd say the opposite extreme, because um, that was kind of a downer. Uh, there have been so many great ones. Probably or another strange one was 1993 um, at Oriole Park when Cal and Billy Ripken were on opposite sides. Billy had signed with the Texas Rangers in the offseason. And of course, as the baseball gods would have it, they were the opening day opponent. So it was kind of a strange one. It's also the first one that Cal Sr. wasn't in the dugout. So that's where I, I dropped the Cal Ripken chapter in the book. I, I love that. So there is a whole chapter for fans to, to dive in on, on the whole Cal family. But um, I, I know you had a credential at one point. You had that <laughs> Orioles branded credential. Um, what what have you loved about just getting to be around the game, especially here in the Mid-Atlantic? You know, I was on MLB Network on Monday and they saw that credential and they said, that was a fake credential. You weren't a member of the media. They were right. I was in sales and marketing, but the Orioles were nice enough to give me a pass so I could give tours of the truck and so forth. But being close to the Orioles' rich history, um, I wasn't an Oriole fan in the 70s, but I certainly became one in the 80s and 90s and up in the early 2000s. And there's just so much rich history. Certainly there's bad years and good years. And I think just like Washington fans, Oriole fans are looking at a rebuilding year here, but there's something special about opening day and, and going out and being part of the orange carpet ceremony. And we spent a whole chapter on that in the book too. I mean, the, the traditions are terrific and um, that's what opening day is all about. And, and Baltimore is certainly right at the top of the list. I think something that is so phenomenal about this is the fact that you were writing about 50 different opening days. This spans 50 years. You weren't hit cramming three or four in, but you also didn't start documenting the pieces of these opening days for a long time. You have this Jim Palmer-esque memory that you're just recalling <laughs> these pieces. I, I mean, take us through the, the chronicling of this and, and how you were able to find these small minutia that really made those opening day memories into the book. So I knew it gone every year, but I certainly couldn't remember every year. Um, but in about 2015, I took my grandson to his first opening day. He was only five years old. Um, don't take five-year-olds to opening days. It was tough. <laughs> but anyway, um, and it was Max Scherzer's debut with the Washington Nationals. And Max is taking a no-hitter into the sixth inning, and Johnny wants to leave. You don't leave the game in the middle of a no-hitter. But anyway, I made a list starting after that, realizing that Johnny was the fourth generation to participate in this annual right of spring. And I started making this list of games that I'd been to and a lot of help online. Baseballreference.com is a treasure trove of game day details. And then I would talk to friends and I would have very specific memories and I would go look into newspaper archives that would bring back more memories and go out on YouTube and find a radio broadcaster or a preserved telecast. And the memories start flooding back. And the memory, yes, you know, Palmer-esque maybe, but it's, yeah, I have a lot of keen, clear memories and had a lot of online help to fill in the blanks. 
Each chapter, though, is one page only on the game. The game itself is really just another regular season game. But then we add a story that is related to that game. Maybe it's a player who contributed to the journey to free agency. Maybe it was the friend I was with at the game that day. Maybe it's the orange carpet history. Maybe it's the racing presidents in Washington. So we have a story to go with each game. All right, last but not least, real quick here. Favorite first pitch you've seen at Camden Yards? Probably Bill Clinton's first attempt because of his courage and going out there um, when he's not exactly a base. He has that baseball pedigree that Ronald Reagan brought to Memorial Stadium or George H.W. Bush or, or even George W. Bush brought to Washington. But to have the courage to go out there as a non-baseball guy, first guy to wear the Oriole cap, the Oriole jacket, and try to appeal to the home fans, I got to give Bill Clinton a lot of credit for that. We will give it to him again. Michael Ortman, congratulations. A phenomenal book, fans. You don't want to miss this one. Opening day, 50 for 50. 50 years of opening day history and memories. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Melanie.